it's a popular topic right now after that game in Toronto because the conspiracy theorists will tell you that Tatum Brown and Horford didn't play in that game because they're not vaccinated and they're not allowed in Canada. And there was the mandate, obviously, that, you know, for anyone asking that did change January 15th uh, with regard to unvaccinated players being able to enter the country and play in those games. And obviously the possibility of these teams clashing in the playoffs, it's okay. Who's going to be available? Everybody that just played, we know is available, but for anyone that wants to look to the last time the Celtics were in Toronto, that was November. All three of those guys did play, but that was before the mandate. So January 15th, things did change. The Celtics have not been in Toronto since, except for the guys that just played the other night. Now, Jason Tatum came out at the beginning of the year and said he is vaccinated, so you don't have to worry about that. So now you have Brown, and now you have Horford, okay? And this is me being a little bit of a hypocrite, admittedly, um, because if it's like if if you don't like the questions Kaufman just jump in the zoom and ask a better question but you know we're getting questions like about Horford the other night basically dancing around the topic saying uh hey so you know some people are wondering you know you, you missed the game for personal reasons and if the Celtics had to play a, a, a playoff game in Toronto could you play mm. as opposed to just saying hey Al you vaccinated right you know because that at least will lead to it, either he's going to say yes or he's going to dance around it and anyone that dances around it you're going to know where they stand on it you know I, I know he said i'd be good to go to play wherever but that just means he could go get the shot now doesn't mean right. that he is vaccinated and so you've you've had obviously enough people come out and say you know i I just don't know. I don't know. There, there is a, there's a belief or a concern over whether obviously Brown and Horford are in fact vaccinated. Are you worried about this? Do you have any theories about this that, that maybe I'm, I've, I've missed on social media? No, I'm, I'm workshopping a lot of different angles to this because okay. there's just, I'm just not sure everything adds up depending on what, on how you look at everything we've been told and have seen. So if you remember back in when Peyton Pritchard broke his nose back in October, B-Rob and Mass Live, who obviously like B-Rob's connected. He's sure. like, when he says something, I, I put stock into it. Mm -hmm. He wrote in, there's an article that he wrote talking about Pritchard, like going back when he broke his nose, I think it was in like Orlando. It talked about when Horford and Jalen went back into the protocols it says like league sources have, you know, indicated to mass live that Tatum and Brown were breakthrough cases and were both vaccinated. Right. So that was in October, November, whatever. Then you start to see, you know, we have email, you know, they don't make the trip to Toronto post the rule changes, but that's understandable. It's a back to back. We're doing the rest thing. Yeah. You know, they were on the injury report, like fine, whatever. So that might say, okay, that's not fishy. Then you have Ime that comes out and says, everybody that's healthy will be active to play wherever. So you're thinking, why would he say that? And then you hear, you know, the rumblings that the Celtics as a team are saying no comment. Yeah. Well, what do we know about people that are vaccinated? They'll tell you they're vaccinated. Yeah, they'll like, shout it from the mountaintops. Like, like if I'm vaccinated, I don't dodge the question. So then I'm thinking like, if they were vaccinated, it's like kind of like, you know, if you have something to hide on your phone, you don't let your girlfriend go through your phone. If you don't, you say, okay, here you go. Like knock yourself. There's no, yeah. there's no hesitation whatsoever. You're in a happy relationship just to confirm. Oh, happy. She can good. go through whatever she wants. All right, good, good. So then I'm thinking like, okay, there might be something to it. And then last night we have Al come out and say, I'm clear to play wherever I'm good. So then I'm thinking, I go back to Ime's quote of when, you know, we know Ime says whatever, sometimes gets him in trouble. The next time they were asked about it, the team gives a no comment. So I'm thinking, let me go back and re-listen to what he said. And here's where, again, this is a complete delusional, like tinfoil hat. I'm just this trying to understand. Is, this is you as Charlie Day with all the screens yeah, on the wall. I'm, and, yeah. I'm just trying to understand how he could say something like what he said about if you're healthy, you're active. And then there's still being this question. And here's where I've netted out. Okay. If you are on the injury report, you are not considered healthy, right? right. <clears throat> Even if it's like a rest day, you have to be put on the injury report with some sort of designation, right? If you have to sit out with COVID, you get put on the injury report. 
for health and safety, whatever they call it, right? Like whatever Kyrie was under when he couldn't play is like, it's designated. Yeah. So if you're on the injury report, you are not quote unquote healthy. Right. And you don't have to be on the injury report for that. They can just say knee. Cause you right. banged but, but up either knee. Way, right. If it's right. health and safety, whatever. Right. So, so if you're, if you go back to Ime's quote and he says, as far as I know, right. Like anyone who's healthy will be good to play wherever. Well, if he knows that there's someone on his roster that will have to be on the injury report because of COVID, then he's not lying when he says mm -hmm. everybody who's quote unquote healthy will be able to play wherever. Because if that, if they end up going to Toronto and everybody's healthy and that's a full roster, he's telling the truth. Yeah. It's a lesson of semantics. To, right. If we get to that Toronto game and now there's someone on the injury report, well, he wasn't lying in March when he said that everyone that was healthy would play because if you're on the injury report for COVID, you're not quote unquote healthy because if you were healthy, you wouldn't be on the injury report. Yeah. So for initial, my initial reaction when I heard that is like, oh, this is just some like Celtics lost a game and here comes the drama, just like always. But then you start to think through it and it's like, if the team is like not openly, you know, cause there are teams that willingly said, we're all vaxxed, we're good, no yeah. problem. There are two that didn't like, you're not doing that if there's not something. And the way that he phrased it, he sort of is like protected no matter what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Because the quote to the masses says, everybody who's healthy, you're right. coming off saying the reason that they didn't travel was because they were on the injury report. Right. So like, maybe we do have an issue. And well, if Horford's gonna come out last night and say it's not him, that points to Jalen, right? Like just by doing- I mean, Horford didn't really say it's not him. He just said like, I'll be good to go wherever. But he didn't say, yeah, I'm vaccinated. I can play. Right. Like he didn't. Answer. So that's another thing. Like, so it's either a, like, was that his way of saying like, I am that like, but again, you could have just said it. So right. I think initially when it all first happened, I was like, I dismissed it. But yeah. then I just started to look back. And once I saw the team deny it and like, it just didn't, it didn't make sense. So like what happened to that? B Rob report from October mm. where they were breakthrough cases because they were vaccinated. But now when you see the ESPN story or anything like that, there's no mention of them being breakthrough cases or vaccinated. Like who wasn't telling me like something doesn't, it just doesn't add up. So I don't think that people are like, I don't think B Rob is making it up. I just sure. think he's going off the information that he's told. Right. And I'm not sure that that information, because who knows, maybe at October, they didn't think that this would be a deal in March. So right. I just, I'm not willing to say it's absolutely nothing. I'm more starting to lean towards it might actually be something. And that's why seeding becomes even more important. So in, in your summation then, just to, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but to put words in your mouth and tell me if you disagree. You believe Jalen, just your belief, you believe Jalen Brown is unvaccinated and Al Horford, you just don't know. I'd say I just don't know on either of them at this point, because yeah. I don't know. I didn't see any of the quotes. If anyone asked Jalen the same, I don't know. I don't if he think was, he's spoken with the media since. Yeah. And like, that's a little concerning, right? Because if you, well, he's not there, you know, every game and it's just been the true, one game. True. I would just say like, it's too, it's impossible to make a proclamation one way or another mm -hmm. on which one or both or whatever. The only thing I can say is when you look at everything that we know of as fact of things that have happened and been reported and talked about and said in public, it doesn't really, it doesn't line up as you would think that if there was zero smoke. And that doesn't mean that they, if one of them or both or either, or whatever, that they just were maybe waiting, maybe they didn't want to get it, and then but were down to get it if something like this came up where you know they may not be available in a playoff series. Okay, I'll get it. Like that is entirely possible too. But I just think like Woj went on TV last night in the pregame and basically said Tatum and Brown are vaccinated. Like he said it without saying it. And right. I just think like it just wouldn't make sense for all that to exist like out of thin air. 
But I don't think anyone can say, oh, this person is, this person is, because like, we don't know. We truly don't know. I just think it just, it just doesn't all add up is what I would say. It just, it doesn't fit like it would of if there really was no smoke, because like we said, if you're vaccinated, you are not shy about telling people you are vaccinated. If you are a team that has talked about, you know, that doesn't have any issues, you have no problem saying my entire roster is vaccinated. So like the fact that they aren't is just, I mean, it's, it's eyebrow rising is all I can say. So this team, this time last week, we were talking about it with Gorman, you know, all's right in the world. And you're going to play who you're, whoever you're going to play. You're not scared of anybody. Ime now has been asked repeatedly questions about jockeying for seating. And he has been consistent in saying our priority is health and playing well. That's what we put first over where we finish in the standings. Do you believe with five games left and everything as tight as it is that this team either will be or should be jockeying for seating to align that first round playoff opponent? So I still think with five games left, there's, I still believe they're just trying to get as high as, like, I don't think they're avoiding anything on March 31st. I think if we get to the last two games of the year, so that's Memphis and Milwaukee and then Memphis, if they are, if it's like unattainable for them to move up, like, because let's say they go on a little bit skid and like, let's say it's not a, a, a one game or a half game separation between, you know, four and three or four and two, whatever. Let's say they're like a game and a half back with the last two. Mm. Then I would think it might make sense if they selectively rest to lock in Miami or to lock in Milwaukee, Philly and Brooklyn in the same half of the bracket, assuming the heat maintain the number one seed. Right. But I think if they're still, if everything is still as tight as it is now on those last two games of the season, you're going to see them play, play the string, how you would, you know, they're not going to be punting games. Yeah. So I still think there's a possibility for that. I do not think we are at that point now because if, because I think personally, you want it to be either the one or the four for a variety of reasons. One, let's say you want to dodge Brooklyn, fine. But the other is, if you now have to have a Toronto situation, you don't want to be three. You want to, you don't want to see that three. If they're going to be the six seed, you don't want that three, six matchup in the right. first round. So that means you need to either finish one or four. Well, losing last night, I mean, you're down two games in the loss column with five to play. You probably just gave up the one seed possibility. So if Miami is going to finish one, you want to finish four. But if they go on a little bit of a drop and let's say the Bucks finish one, then I think, okay, you want like, you want to still strive for that two seed. And if that means you play Brooklyn, like, so be it. Um, I just think it's, it's a situation where they're going to have to play their best regardless of who they play. So I think that's why they were gunning so hard for the one seed, but it would not surprise me if we get to those last two where they take a look at the landscape and say, okay, like we're not going to be able to move up. We may as well do what we can to then not have to face one of those three Brooklyn, my uh, Milwaukee or the Sixers until the conference finals. Like that's just, even if you, are confident against them that's just like common sense to where if you can just force them to all play each other do that but things are still too tight with five games left i don't think they're already thinking that way just yet